So welcome to the viewers of Data Quest. And as you must be knowing, yesterday there was a fundamental, you know, uh, shift in India's semiconductor policy in something which the government called Giant Leap for India Semiconductor Mission. The government has approved three more semiconductor units in Gujarat and Assam. And to make sense of this, we have with us Sanjay Gupta, who is the chair, who is the chairman of the Indian Electronics and Semiconductors Association (IESA). and the president ceo at minda corporation welcome sanjay thank you very much professor sunil really pleasure to be here yeah so i i'll just get straight to it you know if we can pull this off what will be the changes to our tech our industry our economy our global standing and geopolitics of the region because if we can pull off this big move i think there will be fundamental changes at every level absolutely right and uh... if i can just summarize that uh, you know in um, old times the the national borders were uh, paved through army through uh, defense forces but in today's time uh, the bigger enemy is this uh, economic uh, uh, threat on any country and we all know that uh, in today's time where semiconductors drive every single economic vehicle in the country Uh, whether it is automotive industry whether it is consumer industry telecom industry anything you know whatever we touch uh, that is based on semiconductors and hence if the current semiconductor supply chain which is very heavily based on a very specific country uh, near china if anything happens to that uh, it can derail the economy of any country including india and hence i believe that this is a watershed moment for the countries overall sovereignty and the national interest uh now beyond that we all know that semiconductors uh being part of every single ecosystem is a is a driver for economy and uh, that's where uh, currently from a government angle there is so much of consumption that is happening for semiconductors uh case in point even our electronic voting machines uh, our which are digital passports aadhar card so government is a big consumer of semiconductors which we are importing everything today uh you go to the local india ind industry almost 100% of semiconductors we are importing if i talk about automotive as an example with my spark munda hat we are importing 100% of semiconductors uh and you know incidentally this is the largest bomb component in terms of cost so imagine if i have a local supplier available to give me semiconductors they cannot be a, a happier person than me because i will immediately uh insource it rather than import and it will make me more competitive with respect to my global giants all in all i think it's a great move that will push local economy in a very big way and uh, you know just if i talk about some numbers with the current estimation more than 300 billion dollars of esdm and electronics components will be imported next 3 to 5 years fy27 typically we are predicting that and uh, close to 20% of that is semiconductors right so it's a it's a huge opportunity out of 300 billion uh, we are talking about almost 60 to 70 billion dollars of semiconductors that we will be requiring to import so imagine any company in india even take 10% of that share we are talking about you know 6 to 8 billions of dollar right which is not small by any standards yeah. so it's a great opportunity for all the three companies uh, that were announced uh, yesterday uh, you know of course uh, for the wafer fab uh, there's uh, one unit for the tata electronic semiconductors uh, private limited uh, which is happening in uh, gujarat and then there are two more atmp units which are uh, ecosystem for uh, Uh, automated test packaging marking which is a very important uh, uh, other side of the coin for semiconductors manufacturing which is happening in assam and uh, delora so overall it's a very promising move and uh, i mean we all are very happy yeah that's really heartening to hear but then the other side what will be the challenges because it's not going to be easy in the next 5 10 years so what do you think will be the ma major challenges of bringing this large project to fruition i'm sure uh, like anything in life uh, you know there will be challenges uh, it will not be a kind of a straight line yeah uh, i think uh, uh, some of the 
very obvious challenges uh, that seems to be is semiconductors plants unlike uh, any other infrastructure projects require a very high level of sophisticated uh, accuracy in terms of uninterrupted water uninterrupted electricity highest purity of water then it also requires a very uh, unique kind of uh, chemical and gases right. to be part of the ecosystem in a very close vicinity which at the moment we may not have okay in addition it requires a lot of other factors like uh, close proximity uh, where we can have a very seamless freight corridors where we have a seamless logistics corridors uh, you need a uh, huge institutions for uh, academic uh, rigor to be able to create uh, lacks of trained manpower that will be utilized in different parts of uh, the country where these uh, plants are coming in we will be requiring the incubation centers for a lot of experimentation uh, that will happen uh, to make it a reality and since we are talking about uh, the power plants and the water plants you know just to give you a idea the per day consumption of a typical fab for water may yeah. surpass the water requirement for a you know big city like noida yeah. for the for the whole uh, day right that is a kind of water we are talking about and uh, uh, considering we are having uh, uh, not such a great infrastructure at this point in time uh, you know there will be obvious skeptics uh, right. that are going to question that and i think that's where government is uh, surely acting very proactive in uh, while moving uh, uh, the engine forward with a global collaboration but at the same time trying to you know, work out on a ground level uh, many initiatives like you know skilling initiatives startup initiatives very recently we had the future labs inauguration by honorable minister of state uh, rajiv chandrashekhar ji right uh, where uh, uh, more than 1 lakh crore was announced which will be used to develop uh, academic institutes to have the rigor uh, for technology and innovation so i think uh, there are challenges uh, but uh, I'm also sure that uh, once Indians get after anything, you know, yeah. we achieve it, whether it's a rocket or a nuclear bomb. So I'm more than confident yeah. that uh, the next decade belongs to India in yeah. many ways, including making us the semiconductor uh, power to reckon with, uh, you know, within the global ecosystem. Yeah. So I, I liked what you said at the end. I'll maybe expand on that because, you know, I, I feel that we have been missing the semiconductor bus for how long? I don't know. But it feels that finally we have caught the bus. So can you tell me this journey of this bus road? How long will we, you know, become self-sufficient? And also, our, how does this help our India 2047 mission of becoming a tech superpower? Yes. Absolutely. So yeah. uh, with the Honorable Prime Minister's goal of on the 100 year of our independence, yeah. we should be, uh, you know, a power to reckon with both economically as well as technologically. Right. And we are talking about, uh, you know, from the current uh, close to uh, 4 trillion economy and going right. all the way to right. uh, 10 trillion by next 10 years and then, you know, multiplier effect uh, by 2047 right. based on people's guess, but anywhere from a 38 uh, trillion to 50 trillion you know wow. they're all numbers that are floating <laughs> around know. right but yeah. but even in a worst case scenario i think we are going to be uh the top three superpower uh, economic powers in the world yeah and uh, the journey of semiconductors you know if you look back uh, i remember i was a young engineer that time when i right. heard first time government of india is planning a semiconductors uh, manufacturing facility yeah i think there were various att attempts done very uh Frankly, you know, uh, from 2004, there was an attempt done. Right. 2007, there was an attempt done. Uh, 2014, then uh, eventually in 2022, right. uh, the latest uh, policy that Honorable Prime Minister came up with, uh, 76,000 crore package, it is one of the unique ones where at least the the, uh, the supply side of the equation uh, is sorted because... Yeah. With almost close to 70% of the support government is giving is central plus state. Yeah. Plus a lot of uh, preferred, uh, you know, uh, treatment on land and infrastructure, water, electricity. You know, the companies need to only worry about the 30%. Right. But if you fast forward, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, while we have the supply side of situation taken care, the demand side of the situation taken care by uh, what I earlier said, by the government consumption itself, uh, we are 1.5 billion people 
right. more than 300 million passports and uh, you know Aadhaar IDs, which will be cheap enabled in the times to come. Huge government consumption. Then all the Indian tier one companies in automotive, in industrial consumer, they all are hungry for the local chips so that they can uh, procure it from inside rather than outside. Not only it helps in cost, it helps in the supply chain. It helps in the robust communication, iterations, innovative products, and many more aspects to make it the demand side of the equation. So imagine a very robust supply and robust demand. Rust is going to be magic because that's how you can uh, create a very vibrant ecosystem. Uh, within a region, you have everyone from OEM, tier one, and chip suppliers uh, working in a tandem to make it uh, a very robust supply chain. And uh, as we say, you know, make in India uh, for India and for the world. Yeah. And that is also going to be huge impact on our fiscal deficit. Right. So with the uh, 100 million thing by, uh, by the end of this decade, and then it will continue to increase if we do nothing, right? right. With the increase in electronic consumption. Yeah. So imagine the kind of dollar that we are saving uh, in terms of uh, compared to Indian rupee. Right. Uh, it will strengthen Indian rupee. It will help in our inflation, uh, which uh, is gradually improving year on year with the focus on innovation. Yeah. The economy in the country is going to be robust, yeah. like it is right now. India remains the, one of the fastest growing growth economies, and today's numbers were you know mind boggling. Yeah. Eight point four percent growth this yeah, uh, month that. and quarter is Correct. something to feel cheer about. I don't mm -hmm. recall. In last 20 years, I have see, saw this number yeah, I know. in a regular month. It is it is amazing. Yeah. And uh, this only augurs well for, for the whole country, whole nation. Yeah. Uh, and semiconductors will only fuel it forward. Yeah. So I think that's that high is a great point to end. And thank you so much for, you know, demystifying it for our viewers and showing both sides, the challenges also and this also. And I'd love to, uh, for, you know, now really follow the semiconductor industry for the next 10 to 15 years. It'll be really exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I will just conclude by saying sure, that, sure. Uh, you know, there are uh, more countries, uh, and this is uh, kind of on a lighter note, yeah. there are more countries with the nuclear uh, bomb uh, than with the semiconductors. Yeah. How It is how complex it is. Absolutely. But yeah, India that's... will show the world. Yeah. India will show the world that, you know, once we go after something, we make it happen. Through yeah. our, you know, youth of India, uh, right. we are uh, the, the talent for the for the world, not just for the India. Right. Where more than fifty percent of India is uh, less than thirty years, so Absolutely. Uh, I think the future is secured for uh, young Indians uh, yeah. with the prospering uh, technological advancements we are having. Not yeah. just in uh, semiconductors, but also all application areas. Yeah. You know, you have chemical industry thriving, pharma industry thriving, right. aerospace, defense. You know, everywhere it is a very positive news, and I'm sure uh, all of them will require semiconductors, which will be provided by you know back in India chips. So. On this happy note, <laughs> yeah. congratulations on this yeah. major yeah. And, announcement. And congratulations to you too. Your association now will really become busy and you have your work cut out. Yes, and from IESA, we have more than 400 uh, semiconductors and electronic wow. companies which are part of. And yeah. together we are trying to build a you know, enabler for central government as well as all the state governments yeah. so that uh, you know we can help as their shoulder to shoulder to devise the right policies uh, for academia, for uh, you know, laying out for startups, right. uh, how we can enable our youth uh, to go for entrepreneurship in semiconductors, both fabulous as well as uh, manufacturing. Yeah, and uh, it augurs again very well for the country's future. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much for your views. Thank you very much. Very nice talking to you. Yeah.